check, check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo, okay. back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen Delavega. This stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself during quarantine and the rest of your adult life. How are you doing in the chat? It's okay if you are less than well. I just hope that you're alive and not dead. Thank you. Glad it's sounding smooth. Hello. Uh, I think I've hit my computer's limit. There's always this time in a computer's life <laughs> where it starts to huff and puff every time you do something simple. <laughs> so I need to start um, clearing things off because I'm doing a lot more video stuff lately and I should probably take care of that. But thank you for sticking around anyway and hanging out with me. Today is Wednesday, January 13th. Uh, last time on Attack the Pantry, two weeks ago, because we skipped a week, we learned what the hell Demigloss was, and we had a tiny intro to Mother Sauces. It's probably a bigger subject we'll get into another time. But you can watch all the past clips here on my channel if you click on videos, and the entire archive is located at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-D-L-V. Make sure to subscribe there. So, hey, I'm a Twitch affiliate, um, and so if you have Amazon Prime, you can gift a subscription to your favorite creators every month so they get a little pocket change. So if you have one, click on the purple button above the right of this video. It says gift a sub, and you'll get a little crown next to your name in the chat, just like the lovely people who are here already. Isn't that nice? Little crowns, little royalty. Woo! <laughs> What's going on on Patreon? Um, gosh, uh, I make, I, I started doing scape videos again because it stopped, well, all the snow melted and it stopped raining. Um, and it's been really cold. It's been about 35 degrees-ish outside, but sunny. So scape video 45 is a show and tell of the different skateboards I've accumulated over the past nine months. It's really weird that I started skateboarding nine months ago, but it's only been 50 days of it. It's like not consecutive, so. Eh. Anyway, um, what else is new? Uh, we had a new Float Chatty episode that went up last week and a Fun City holiday bonus for Oh My Plus patrons. Uh, that all came out on Friday. You'll get to hear me channel Walter, Walter Matthau from Grumpy Old Men and Dennis the Menace. Aha! <laughs> um, it's really fun, um, and it's totally in canon. So, the holiday special is kind of like, it wasn't a Christmas special, and it wasn't a New Year's special, it's more of like a begin the year special. Um, and it takes place in a sitcom that a character watches on Fun City, so it's like really deep in there, <laughs> in the world. Um, and it was really fun to write a few commercials for it. Um, only one of my commercials made it to the final cut, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the rest of the commercials 
on my Patreon. So, <laughs> ooh, thanks for following, Nilly Line. Welcome to the stream. Oh, and welcome to the stream, Joe. Nice to see you. Great. Glad you're here. Hope hopefully we can talk about food and I can help you cook and stuff. Um, what else is happening? Uh, I skipped last week, so there's just a lot of stuff piled up. Um, on Patreon, I have a new recipe today for tato wedges. I spell it T-A-Y-T-O-H, tato, because I'm a child. Um, there's a recipe for chicken and corn soup, crispy eggplant fries, and my mom's pancit, if you missed it from the Noche Buena event. I also put the replay of the Museum of Food and Drink event on there for all of my patrons so you can follow along and learn about this dish that I make every Christmas. Yeah. Um, our next Netflix party, or I'm sorry, they, they renamed it. It's called Teleparty. Um, it's a, a Chrome extension that you can install that uh, allows me to host uh, Netflix viewing parties. So we're going to be continuing Salt, Acid, Fat, Heat on February 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'll also put up another poll on Patreon for the next food show or movie we should watch after that. Um, there were a lot of great choices that we didn't get to yet, so uh, I'll just put up another poll this week. Um, so if Patreon, Twitch sub, or Etsy is impossible for you and you want to tip me for good cooking advice, my Venmo and PayPal is this username below. Or tell a friend to subscribe here or on Instagram. Those are free and nice things you can do to help. Yeah. Um, friends. Let's do a snack check. What are we snacking on? Snack check. Snack check, snack check. What are you, what are you snacking on in the chat? I am drinking. This is a really fun game I've been playing on Twitter. <laughs> what I juice. <laughs> this is ancillary to Shannon O'Dell's What am I looking at here during our trivia nights? Um, this is my What I juice. <laughs> Oh, wow, you just had cookies from Levan. Two chocolate chip and the oatmeal raisin. Goodness me, I can I can barely get through one of the Levan cookies. They're like thick babies. Thick. <laughs> All right, peach rings and Arizona iced tea because it's been a day. I feel that. Oh, Clam Watson, welcome to the chat. Uh, you made milk bread yesterday, so toast. Lovely. <clears throat> Did you do the Hokkaido style where you have to cook the dough a little bit before you before you bake it? I haven't tried it yet, but I've been reading a lot about it, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you only had the half of the Levant cookie. <laughs> See, I told you, it's, it's a thick cookie. <laughs> oh, cool. That's great that you got a Pullman pan. I, I don't have a Pullman, a proper Pullman pan that is straight on the sides. My loaf pans are from the dollar store and have slanty sides. So, you know, not, not as cute. But cool. Nice to hear um, about what you've been making. Uh, whoa, Twitch Bryant, you're trying out your first water kefir ferment. Hell yeah. Uh, I, my friends Kate and Anthony are also making kefir. Or am I, or is it kvass? Oh my gosh, I'm getting confused. They're making kvass, I'm sorry. I, not kefir. <laughs> but kefir, the only experience I've ever had with it is, um, <laughs> we were, my roommate had a girlfriend who had a dog who had gastrointestinal problems and we had to, uh, <laughs> mix in kefir with the dog's food so it wouldn't, wouldn't fart all over the house. <laughs> oh, cool. You found me from a Twitter, from a pop-up meal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. Glad to see you in the chat and on Twitch. I haven't done a pop-up in a while. I was talking to Moto about coming back to the distillery for the winter and maybe doing like chili, chili pop-up because it's cold. Um, but yeah, it's been a little hard to do pop-ups and stuff, um, with all the strict guidelines and I'm immunocompromised, so, uh, <laughs> I'll try, I'll try, I'll try again soon. But welcome, all you new viewers, I'm very, very excited to see you here. Um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, yeah, so I didn't answer this, what a, what a juice, 
Um, <laughs> this has been a fun game on Twitter because my mom got me a juicer for Christmas. It was the only thing I ever wanted. And um, yay. It is the, I, I believe, Try Best. Try best cold press. It was like recommended on the wire cutter. Um, but basically, I've been juicing uh, pretty much every day or every other day and posting the photo on Twitter and being like, what I juice? And it's been really fun because I'm, you know, if, if you've been following me for a minute, you know that I'm a wackadoo and that I'll put anything in the juicer, things that you won't necessarily think that had juice. Um, for example, um, the first, the first week I was doing this, I was juicing all these green beans. Um, cause I, I, I bought like bulk green beans or bulk vegetables for Christmas and it was way too much. If you go to AsianVeggies.com, like I, <laughs> everything was four to five pounds when I was expecting two or three. And so, uh, I was like, well, could I juice green beans? And it turns out they're super good. Like they've got this residual sugar, um, or, um, yeah, they've got sugar in them, kind of like sugar snap peas. Uh, and they were really, really good with uh, celery and uh, apple and beets. Um, but here, does anyone have any guesses what I juice <laughs> in this one? There's... How many vegetables in this one? Nah, I just... I can't think about it. But it's really good. This one is, okay, I'll tell you. This one is majority grapes, ginger, celery, and a peach. That's why there's a lot of sediment here at the bottom. I think that's from the tannins of the uh, grape skins and, and the ginger. I gotta say, if you buy a juicer in the future, uh, juice the ginger last. <laughs> Because the ginger is very fibrous and, and clogs up the, the works, you know? So yeah, that's my juice adventure. I've been juicing a lot. Whoa, thanks for following, Egg Witch. I feel like we are kindred spirits. At the mention of an egg, I feel like I have to put an egg on me. Why, right? At the mention of an egg. There we are. Put an egg on me. These eggs were designed by my friend, Drip who has a Twitch channel, she, I'll, I'll put it here, Twitch, GP, okay, yeah, that is my friend's Twitch channel, she streams every Tuesday night, and, uh, does live pixel art, and so, uh, she loves food, and games, and music, and everything, she's just really fun, <coughs> all right, so, business out of the way, my friends, if you want to be featured in the next segment, uh, I do this every week, you can send me your cooking photos uh, either on Instagram or, or Twitter. You can tag me. Um, I love showing off what people are cooking. You can show me your successes and your failures. It's all right. Take the L. Maybe we can learn from it as a group. Uh, but don't forget, you can be featured in this next segment um, next week if you didn't send me anything this week. But I love showing off what people have cooked. Let's check it out. Ha, 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 ha. Um, this necessarily wasn't a photo, but I ask, I ask every week, you know, what have you been cooking? And um, this week has been exceptionally strange. Um, and Gigi on Twitter says, oh, much, oh my god, how much time do I have? The worse it gets, the more manic it gets in her kitchen. Okay, understandable goulash, red cabbage and chestnuts, pozole verde, cider braised pork shoulder, lamb shanks, white beans, English muffins, apple crumble, vanilla bean ice cream, angel food cake, potage parisian. Holy moly, that's a lot of stuff. Uh-oh. The music stopped. Come on. I... I don't know. I do have moments where I, I do have like manic energy and can cook all day and all night, but last week was definitely not one of them. So, Gigi, please send some of your leftovers this away. <laughs> um, my friend Dawn said that they got my card. <laughs> so for Christmas, I ordered a bunch of um, bird butt cards from my friend Tommy Siegel. 
<laughs> and they landed at their respective places, and my friend Dawn put a bird butt in her tree. My friend Tommy is the best. If you're not following Tommy on Twitter, he's a great cartoonist. There you go. You can find bird butt cards and many other pieces of really fun merch on there. What else? What else? <clears throat> so that's from Dawn. This is from my mom, who is making japchae. Uh, happy Korean day also to everyone. Hooray. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about it, and japchae is actually not very far away from pansit, which is the dish that I've been teaching people for the last couple months. Um, but I think just the biggest difference are the toppings, um, the seasoning, and the noodle composition. So pansit is usually rice stick or cornstarch thick, and uh, japchae is typically potato starch or sweet potato noodle. And you can see that she has some spinach, mushroom, onion, egg, eggies, peppers, shrimp, and steak. All of this could apply to pancit as well, except that the pancit is making a potent broth that the noodles will soak up as well. So, cool, mom is experimenting in the kitchen. Yo, good job, mom. <laughs> Uh, Sean, who uh, you might have met in the chat before, has moved to Austria and sent this cute photo of like the first dinner in his new house. And he made schnitzel, gluten-free schnitzel. It looks super crispy uh, and I'm really curious uh, about the breading here because Sean is uh, gluten-free. So uh, this is probably a starch-based and cornmeal-based batter. Uh, we'll have to talk more about that with him later, but really cool nice nicely crisp and those green beans look like legit nice and shiny Yeah, it looks really good Good job Sean All right another regular here in the chat Schmas sent the pork loin that he made for New Year's Eve um, If you'll remember or if you weren't here for that episode uh, Schmas asked how can I, I want to make porchetta, <laughs> but they removed the skin from the pork belly. How can I still make it crisp? And uh, we talked about scoring the skin, um, but totally blasphemous of Costco for taking off the pork skin on a, for a porchetta. Like that is... Like, this is so cursed, um, but it looks really nice and tender and that you've rendered a lot of the fat. And while it might not have that same crunchity crunch as a pork skin on a normal porchetta, it looks like the fat was satisfying at least and not gummy. <laughs> so I hope my advice really helped you there. And we got a close up here of the spiral. That looks really good, Schmas. Like, great job. It kind of looks that it's like it looks like a pineapple on the outside with the scoring, but it, it, this is lovely. Great job! Woo! Advice helped. Woo! <laughs> so cool. Yeah, food spiral is best spiral. It does look very nice. Really, really nice. Nice. I mean, nice. <laughs> um, here we have Justice's plate. Can you remind me again? Was this catfish? What did you put in your your dry rub and collards? And you were telling me that you had uh, put more cheese in the biscuits because you just had all this leftover cheese and you were like, why not? But I think what happened here is uh, the cheese outweighed the flour and the cheese didn't have anything to grab onto, you know? So in like... Um, you know, red lobster biscuits, cheese biscuits, um, there's a lower amount of cheese because they sort of need some kind of like building structure to grab onto when it melts. And then when you have more cheese than the flour situation, um, it will melt. <laughs> and so if there's no wall stopping it, no cell wall stopping it, it's just gonna pool everywhere. But I mean, it still looks like it tastes good, right? I mean, more cheese is great. But structurally, it was probably, uh, I don't know. What was it like structurally? 
You put three quarters of a block of cheese and figured why not put it all in. Educational L. Yeah, totally. Totally. Everybody else, please feel free to send me your L's. Like, it's okay. We'll put an F in the chat. <laughs> no, wait, you know what? No, let's put a Y in the chat for yum. <laughs> Y's in the chat for yum. Because <laughs> it's not a terrible L. It's not, a, not an F. That's a Y. I think it still looks yum. Okay, pancakey texture. That sounds great. Cool. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe we've invented something here. Like a cloudy biscuit. A cloudy cheesy biscuit. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing this. Um, Danelle, who... Did you just subscribe? I think I just saw you subscribe. Thanks for subscribing again. Very nice. Um, Danelle's been enjoying... Pulling apart half of a rotisserie chicken and then combining with rice and shiitake mushrooms simmered in fish dashi, soy sauce, mirin, and brown sugar until it evaporates. <gasps> that sounds lovely. Oh, I missed the picture. Sorry, Danelle. Oh, wait, but you did send me a picture of the dashi that you said that you were just drinking straight up. Is that right? <laughs> Is that good? Bonito soup stock. <laughs> um, if you can't find this, dashi is actually quite easy in, in procedure. Uh, it's just finding the ingredients. So dashi, to make um, like a quart of dashi, you need a cold pot of water, a handful of bonito flakes, and one sheet of kombu. And you let that rest overnight, and then you'll have dashi. <laughs> overnight, no cooking necessary. But if you need it quickly, you can boil it for 20 minutes and strain it, and you've got your soup base. This is the basis of ramen and a lot of Japanese cooking. So fishy, fishy seaweed stock is delicious. It's the base of miso soup as well. Oh, hi, Mall Cat. Welcome to the chat. Tried Crock-Pot hot chocolate recently. Turned out really well. Yum. Did you use, like, a mix or did you use chocolate chocolate? I find it hard to clean when I use chocolate chocolate. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, my brother received his Christmas gift, which was four pounds of bacon. <laughs> There's this brand I really like called Nueskis from Wisconsin, and I sent my family um, pounds of bacon for Christmas, and so my brother has been making it. This is the pepper bacon with um, Gordon Ramsay's soft scrambled eggs. Uh, in Gordon Ramsay's recipe, um, the eggs take 20 minutes to stir with butter. Uh, I know it's a labor of love, uh, but they're great. Uh, and at the end, he stirs in some creme fraiche or sour cream to make it all luxurious and pillowy. Um, I haven't made those in a long time. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Hmm. Uh, good job, brother. <laughs> and then Joe, uh, sent me this video of trying to crack an egg with one hand. Um, so we have a learning moment here. Oh, broke it. Dang. Sometimes if your finger is in the way or you've got a jagged piece of egg yolk, uh, no, of, uh, the eggshell it might um, break on the way down. Uh, but another secret for cracking eggs with one hand is to crack it on a flat surface, not on the edge of the pan. So if you crack things on the edge of the pan, it's more likely to put more of the little shards in the egg white. So if you break it on a flat surface, it's a flat break, um, and then it's a wider, a wider cut as well, so that you can reach your fingers in and, <laughs> like, you're like, crack, crack, and then, uh, pull it apart with your fingers like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was horrible. <laughs> I'm a person, yeah, I break on a flat, not on the edge. <laughs> Well, thanks everybody for um, sending in photos and video. If you'd like to be included in this segment next week, please uh, Instagram, email, tweet, tag, text, 
you know, all the different ways you can get in touch with me. Um, let's put another egg on me. Hey, it's a poached egg. Uh, sorry, Danelle, I missed that one photo. I had to, I was looking at my text and I didn't, didn't catch that one. But, but great job, everybody. We didn't have a lot of culinary L's this time. <laughs> Ah, all right, so I've seen what y'all have done. What have I been doing this week? Um, let's see what I've been doing this week. Well, on New Year's, uh, I was with my friend Pod and <laughs> crashed on my friend's couch, and he made me a bacon, egg, and cheese, and I was so grateful. Like, first meal of the year, a sandwich someone else makes for you. That is the best. <laughs> also, I was tired and hungover. <laughs> uh, what is the first thing that you had this year? Hmm. Oh, oh, going back to the crock pot hot chocolate from Mall Cat. Chocolate chips, cocoa powder, sugar, and jumbo marshmallows, milk, and heavy cream. Oh, yeah. That sounds great. Ooh, vegan hot chocolate recipe. Extremely boozy, extremely good. I am all into that. Yeah, it's all about the thumb and pinky dexterity. You know, you know. With cracking an egg with one hand. Okay. <clears throat> so, what's the first thing y'all have had this year to eat? Um, mine was a bacon, egg, and cheese made by someone else. <coughs> I apologize for more bean discourse. <laughs> If Bean Dad soaked the beans and didn't have canned beans in the house, wouldn't have this six hour debacle. <laughs> Would have been like, open the bag and we're done. <laughs> um, so these are beans that I made the other night. I soaked them for one night. Just regular white navy beans, uh, soaked overnight, and then in a slow cooker with half a can of salsa. Um, leftover can of pickled jalapenos with the juice, um, a jar of pickle juice, uh, two cups of water, big chunks, big, big chunks, uh, you can see of the Nueskis bacon, and then I had it over some rice, uh, with big flakes of Malden salt. Um, it's delicious. I'm a huge proponent of using pickle juice in bean recipes, bean and chili recipes, because... Um, vinegars uh, mellow out when they cook over a long period of time and it's the secret to a, so a class of sauces called gastriques. So gastriques are vinegar based um, and uh, like one of the more famous versions of gastrique is adobo from Filipino cuisine which is soy sauce, vinegar, garlic, black pepper <laughs> simmered down until it's like mellow and awesome. <coughs> so those are my beans from the other night. Yeah. You don't remember the first thing you ate this year? <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. What else? Um, so this was an experiment. I This is the second cake I've ever baked from scratch that wasn't from a box. I'm, I may be a chef, uh, but I'm not a great baker. <laughs> In fact, I, I don't like it. But... Uh, I was thinking the other day about our conversation a couple months ago about egg replacements. I made a little chart about it too, if you are on my Patreon, but I was thinking like, okay, so applesauce is a viable substitution for egg in cake recipes, cakes and brownie recipes. So what if I've been juicing all of these apple can I use the discards from the juicer to make my fake egg for a cake? And guess what? <laughs> it works. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't just the straight apple discards. Um, I used apple and beet and then added a little bit more of the juice back in because applesauce is a little wet, eggs are a little wet, um, we need a little bit of that moisture. Um, the thing that I was worried about is that the fibers from the beet and apple discard would be too heavy for the cake to rise. Um, but 
uh, I was proven wrong and the cake rose albeit it's it's a little dense the day after um, it looks kind of fluffy here it could be fluffier I think um, I believe my solution next time might be apple discards and aquafaba or like bean water um, because bean water uh, whips up really nicely and so uh, I think that would increase the volume on this but this is a guess what vegetable I used in this cake <laughs> I used butternut squash so this is a butternut squash cinnamon cake with you know using apple and beet uh, discards but yeah, I didn't get any of the flavor from the apple and beet. I still had to add sugar. Um, the icing here, I didn't really like it in the end. I should have just like not iced the whole cake. But it, I was trying to do uh, a marshmallow cream cheesy situation. It was a little too much. I, I don't really like sweet stuff. So uh, I, I messed up the frosting. It looked really grainy and gross. So the next best thing was I crushed up a bunch of peanuts and coated it all over so that it looked consistent. <laughs> so this looks professional and stuff, but it was an absolute mistake. <laughs> all of it is a mistake. Um, no, I mean, I'm just really glad that the my theory of using fruit discards from the juicer can work in cakes. So. If you, you are trying to make something that isn't rising as much, like two thin cakes or a um, tray bake, like a bake well or, um, or brownie, uh, fruit discards will work in a pinch, which is crazy. Yeah, it's true. Baking has too many rules for chaotic neutral JDLV. It's very, very true. Ooh, Twitch Bryant says, one of the first things you made was cookies using soybean pulp leftover from making soy milk. Wow, is there a name for the soybean pulp? I feel like it's called Okara or something. Yeah, oh, oh! <laughs> oh, cool, it is Okara, great. Oh, I, I'm glad I remembered that. Um, I was at a food conference last year and um, there is a chocolate company that is trying to use Okara as the main substance for their chocolate. It was like really, um, really smooth um, and didn't really stick to your mouth like chocolate normally does. So it wasn't as fatty as I would want it to be, but it's really interesting to look at what people are trying to do with Okara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. Um, also, there's like Okara, yeah, more cookies and stuff. Yeah, 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 you made cookies. Do you remember where you got your recipe for that, for the Okara cookies? Yeah, it's like a fortifier. Like, you know, thinking about that Okara and um, like the Shadowrun game that I play, um, the world is based in New York City 2101, and one of the biggest things that I've been like struggling with as like a, a player is food is mostly soy based, but when you when you say stuff like that, we're making good cookies. Oh, Heavenly Fan on YouTube, cool, cool, cool. So we're making cool cookies with Okara. It makes me think that the, the future is not so bleak if everything is soy based. Oh, awesome. Soylent cookies. Yeah, they're kind of like Soylent cookies. <laughs> kind of. Anyway, this was my cake adventure. Um, wow. Uh, I still haven't finished this cake. I froze one half of it. <laughs> and I ate a third of, I ate a third of a layer. Um, the other, like last week when, when I was doom scrolling and like, haven't slept and so I just started eating it people thought it was just a giant cookie but it was a freaking cake layer that I was eating <laughs> uh, um, the beginnings of this recipe is on my patreon so I have a recipe for crispy eggplant eggplant fries so you can start with that and just eat them as is or you can keep going and make Szechuan eggplant like I have here with um, with pea shoots this was this really like made me miss going out to restaurants in chinatown um 
Yeah. <laughs> this is my tribute, my tribute, tribute, tribute to the restaurants in Chinatown. I love Chinatown. I just wish riding the subway wasn't so scary right now. <laughs> Um, a friend, a friend of mine and I went on a long day journey to New Jersey, and we stopped at pretty much all of the roadside attractions you could think of. We stopped at a Wawa to get pretzels. We discovered this place called Windmill in the Jersey Shore. They are known for their all beef hot dogs. Um, I drove, we drove by, and I was like, "What's that?" And <laughs> And uh, I was looking it up on the internet, and I was just like, I don't know. On their website, they're telling, they're saying themselves that they're the best hot dogs in the area. Um, but then we saw all these, these big dudes in trucks pull up to this restaurant, like car after car, big truck after big truck, pulling into the parking lot and getting their hot dogs. And I was like, this place is good. I bet it's good. I bet it's good. And we were not disappointed. We got a hot dog with like grilled onions and mustard on it and it was delicious like i haven't had a hot dog like this that snapped like that like since a like i went to a sports game i don't remember what sport but <laughs> i went to a sports game and it was so good um anyway so if you are in the jersey shore area or driving by highly recommend stopping by a windmill <laughs> uh okay where else did we go? Um, this is in Hackensack, New Jersey. It is called White Mana Burgers, and they specialize in sliders. So I got a few and some thick cut fries uh, and ate them in the car, and it was great. You can order ahead. They take about like 10 minutes to make everything, and you pick up everything at the back door. You can't go inside anymore, but. Uh, it was really quick and really easy and really affordable. So if you're driving by Hackensack, New Jersey, highly recommend. Also, um, it was like 10 o'clock at night and we were nearing this bakery called Del Ponte's and uh, I spent almost $40 <laughs> on a box for myself. <laughs> Look, I needed a treat after last week. <laughs> um, so top corner, you see I have rainbow cookies. They had two different kinds, one with raspberry filling and one with apricot filling. I think I like the apricot better. Um, you can see there's a giant spoliatelle there, which is the um, lobster tail. It looks kind of like a croissant but um, it's got way more layers. There's an episode of British Bake Off where they try to make it in hot weather and all of the dough just melts everywhere, um, but it's very complicated. Um, and this one is not exactly a sfogliatelle. It's, a, um, it's stuffed with ricotta cheese and orange zest. Okay, yes, delicious. And even two days after buying it, it was still really crunchy. And that is like hallmark of amazing food that it remains crunchy. Lovely. Um, you can see I also got like a pound of pignoli cookies. Um, they look simple and they look like, nah, maybe I don't want that. No, <laughs> you have to get the pignoli cookies. <laughs> They look like they're hard as rocks on the outside, but when you bite into it, it's like this soft, like chewy inside, like almond paste, like crunchy pignoli on the outside, like delicious. I ate the last one last night and I was really mad at myself. <laughs> and then the bottom corner, let me see if I can drag this a little bit so you can see it better, but these are hazelnut meringue cookies and at first I thought oh no these are also gonna be as hard as rocks but I bit into it the outside was really crackly from the egg white and then the inside was like chewy chocolate Del Ponte's bakery it's a trek out there but highly worth it if you're driving around New Jersey oh my goodness oh my goodness let me catch up here in the chat my fellow Friday witch, Hannah Leonard, yes, oh, this is true, I will get to that in a minute, uh, made a bunch of Shadowrun cocktails for your game out of Synthol. Whoa, dope. Oh, Mallcat, you've never had eggplant? Um, 
I wouldn't say that eggplant has its own distinct flavor. It has a really cool texture that can crisp up or get really mushy for dips. So it can take on like the flavor of a lot of cuisines. So you'll see it a lot in Chinese cooking and then also in Arab cooking and Middle Eastern cooking. Um, it's, it's quite good. <laughs> I think some starter recipes if you want to try playing with eggplant are um, baba ganoush, which is a dip you can have with chips and pita. Or um, this crispy Szechuan eggplant is also another great starter. Um, yeah. And there's different kinds of eggplant too. There's fairy eggplants, which are little babies. There's regular big eggplants like the emoji. And then there's Japanese eggplants that are long and skinny. So yeah, there, there's lots of different versions and different ways to flavor them. They pair really well with lemons and sesame flavors and spicy flavors. So there's lots and lots of possibilities for eggplant. We should talk about eggplant on another stream. My gosh. Oh, thanks for subscribing, DJ. How you doing? Dang, you need all of this. Oh, you're in Seattle? But you've got lots of great food in Seattle. Man, yeah, you got lots of great food in Seattle. Hey, Schmas. Nice to see you. Um, I showed off your porchetta earlier. I'll, sh I'll show it off again later. But I'm just, uh, I'm just showing what I've been eating and, and cooking. Yeah. All right, so this was in New Jersey. What else did I do? What else did I do? Oh yeah, 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 okay. So I had two articles come out at the beginning of the year, which is really exciting and a great way to start um, publishing, you know, <laughs> anything. Uh, if you don't know what else I do in real life, I, I'm usually a chef, but since I can't really do a lot of events right now, I've, I've gone back to writing and social media um, and one of the places that I write for is Taste, Taste Cooking and uh, I've written a couple of essays about um, being a Filipino American and cooking and I also have started to develop recipes for them and the first one of the year was this uh, patty melt, a pork, uh, this is a new take on a patty melt so if you've gone to diners and gotten a patty melt, it's beef based, it's fried on both sides, it's got onions and cheese, um, but my version uses a pork patty that you can make at home uh, that's very similar to breakfast sausage or Italian sausage. And then instead of just caramelized onions, I've added like an apple relish, the Fuji apple relish that goes on top of the pork. And I tested this over Thanksgiving and it was a hit with all of my friends. Uh, so this, is, this recipe is now up on taste cooking. Let's see if I can get it for you here. Sorry, maybe I'll just, I'll give you my author page on taste and so you can look at all the recipes. There's also a recipe here for lumpia. Here we go. Yeah, you can get the recipes for both of the sandwiches I'm about to talk about. So here. Um, this is the pork patty mouth. And then here, this one up. Woo! Woo! Okay, I didn't food style this. <laughs> Usually I'm part of the photo shoot when, when we do magazines, things like this, but um, I was, I gasped when I saw this. This is the Francesinha. This is a sandwich you can get in Porto, Portugal. It is typically enjoyed in restaurants with a knife and a fork. It is a meat heavy sandwich that is smothered with cheese, covered with an egg, and then soaked with a um, boozy, boozy, boozy gravy. So the gravy um, varies from restaurant to restaurant, but the one that I've used here has a very dark fond because uh, I've made the gravy in the same pan that you've seared all the meat. So you get all that wonderful decliquage at the bottom. And uh, I've added like port, whiskey, and beer in here. So it's boozy, 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 but you cook it enough uh, that the alcohol evaporates off and leaves all of the lovely flavors and sugars in the gravy. Um, and if you do embark on this recipe, it is quite 
a shopping list. It is a long shopping list of a lot of meats, so don't feel pressured to use all the ingredients. <laughs> you can pick one or two of the proteins and go from there, or um, do what I did, which is um, buy, you know, the six pack of linguica sausage, a bunch of steak, and freeze half of it, and then make your sandwiches <laughs> so that you could come back to those ingredients later. But um, yes, I was very proud of this. Yes, this photographer chose violence. Beautiful, delicious violence. Um, this is a meat version of a Long Island iced tea. It's true. It's true. Portugal knows what's going on. <laughs> I got some really cool um, memories and stories from friends who have had it before. Yeah, it will definitely knock you on your ass just as fast. Yeah. Um, my friend Chandi said that it took her three days to finish this sandwich. Uh, it was delicious, but made her feel a little ill. Like, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> So you can grab the recipes in the link I shared in the chat. Um, there's also a bunch of other recipes I've written there. Um, but those are the two pieces that I've published. I know, three days. I, I can relate though. If I order like a sub sandwich, like a foot long sandwich from my local place, like an eggplant parm or a chicken parm, it takes me three days to finish that. Like if I go to Wawa, the sandwich that I get is the little junior, which is only this big. I can only finish half of a Subway sandwich, like three inches. I don't know, I have a very um, interesting appetite. As long as it's different foods, I'll keep eating. <laughs> but if it's the same food, I'll be like, I'm sick of it already. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Yes, yes, it did take three days. <laughs> uh, all right, um, and finally, Justice mentioned this already earlier, but I'm going to be on a stream on Friday um, with Slady's ATL. These are my friends in Atlanta who run games on Twitch. We're playing a one-shot called Mundane Magic. Um, sorry, you can't see all of us here. So me, Cecilia, and Hannah. Hannah's the one you said that made the cocktail. Cool. Um, but we are going to be playing as three witches who are all powerful and weaving the loom of time and space. Um, and then something happens on earth that, uh, you know, it's not my fault, but something happened and we have to go back down to earth and blend in somehow and help a dinosaur fall in love. So it's going to be really fun on Friday. If you head over, let me just put the twitch.tv slash slay D's ATL. Um, oh, thank you, Evolve to the Next, for following. Welcome to the chat. Oh, Mall Cat, really? Fun City was your intro to tabletop RPGs. Now you're obsessed. Well, welcome. I'm, a, I'm also relatively new. I've only been doing the show for a year and a quarter, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the least experienced on Fun City. Like, at least Shannon and Bijan have played D&D before we played Shadowrun, but yeah, I uh, I really fell in love with it because I am, I'm definitely like a, a rules hoarder, like I love rules. I, if you could, I don't know if you could tell, <laughs> but you know, I was like a parliamentarian in, um, in student government, so like Robert's Rules of Order and Shadowrun are not that far off. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if you heard in an early fun chatty that we were talking about, you know, what it was like to prepare for our game. Thank you. I love, yeah, I love the world of Fun City. It's really, really, uh, it's really, really fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we, we actually prepared for a whole year before we even released an episode. Like we met a year before. Um, and we recorded, we played a bunch of test games that we never, um, that we never aired. And then we, we tried to do a pilot and we didn't really like it. And then, yeah, we didn't really like the first, the first game that we played. Um, we were a little awkward. We hadn't gelled together yet as a cast. Um, 
but yeah, it took us like nine months from then to to release the first episode, and now now we're like at twenty, and um, I'm excited about our mini series, uh, which I love very much. But I cannot wait until we get back to Shadowrun. Um, but yeah, yeah, we like to prepare. We over prepare actually. Wait, Justice, you stole so much from Fun City for your last Shadowrun campaign, except it was PCP, baby. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> You'll have to tell me which parts you, you stole. Because, you know, our game is still continuing. It's just we're on a little break. I know, I'm also going to miss Float City. I mean, Mercus, my little son. My little lizard son. I love, I love my little Mercus. All right. Uh, so that's what's happening on Friday on the Sladies ATL channel. Um, it's going to be a good time. What else is happening? So I've got eggs on my face. Hello. <laughs> you can't wait for Viv to watch people melt themselves again. I mean, I mean, she wasn't completely in control at that moment. You know, oh no, you know. Yeah, I also can't wait. I, I miss Viv very much. I mean, the last time we I got to even play her was Gen Con, which was in August. And I was definitely, like, more comfortable on the microphone. Like, you'll sort of notice in the first few, few episodes of Fun City that, like, I hesitate a little bit or uh, I'm not as vocal, but now you can't shut me up, so... <laughs> I'm a little too comfortable now on the microphone. <laughs> okay, okay. What's going on? Okay, so next week, if you want to be featured on the stream, I want to show off your cooking photos. Like, I'm going to revisit here. We're going to revisit Schmasses because you're here now. But this is, this is a porchetta that you made. And the cross-section which is gorgeous I mean it's really sad that Costco removed the skin <laughs> and I hope that you find another vendor for your next porchetta but I can see that you tied your twine really tightly it looks really good yeah Schmas, can you reiter reiterate what was inside of your porchetta I remember it was herbs and garlic but um mall cat wants to know are those nuts I know give me my skin Give me my skin. <laughs> I think there were herbs, garlic, and I think those look like pine nuts. Rosemary, garlic, onion, pine nuts. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It didn't crunch, but the fat at least was not uh, chewy, right? It wasn't rubbery. I hope not. But yeah, for anyone that's going to embark on a porchetta, Make sure you score your skin because it's gonna release alleyways of fat as it cooks. Yeah, just no crunch. We need that crunch. Gosh darn it. We need that crunch. Okay. Well, my friends. Um, let's like talk about and not talk about last week. You know what I mean? Like, okay, so last week was really hard. Like, I did not do a stream last week um, because I couldn't I couldn't really bring myself to be in front of a camera and as, as casual as this is like it is some kind of performance and like I have to be a person and I, I couldn't be a person last week so I decided to skip the stream um, but it made me think about you know in times of crisis um, how do we eat again like how do we cook again like I I was not like Gigi um, earlier who, who tweeted that she was a manic cook during the last week. Sometimes I do get that kind of energy, but um, I was just really, really deflated. Um, here, see, I made a graphic. <laughs> this is a new design language thing that's going on um, because I'm going to have guests, uh, which I'll talk about later. Um, but how about you? Were you able to cook for yourself over the last week? If so, what did you do? Um, 
And if you could not cook for yourself, what did you order or what did you microwave or what was fast for you to make sure that you still ate something? Like there were some days last week where I forgot to eat and then I felt horrible and then I ate something and I was like, oh, I feel better, like I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> you're the Gigi, you couldn't stop cooking and eating. All right, all right, all right. Um, I, yeah, I had a hard time getting back into the kitchen, which is why I went on this big trip with my friend um, to drive around Jersey and eat hot dogs and burgers and chicken sandwiches and all the cookies. But then, you know, I ate the whole box of cookies yesterday and I felt like really hyped up on sugar. And then like after that, I need, I need a freaking juice, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you ordered a bacon cheeseburger pizza. Yeah. That sounds great, but also really heavy. Like, what is this about comfort food? You know, I, I'm really fascinated with this subject because I've written a, a book about comfort food with recipes in it, but never did I consider after writing a book like that why I needed comfort food so much. You know, like, I always, I try to ask this question when I'm around other artists or, or uh, chef people, like, you know, what is your go-to comfort food? Um, what do you do when you get tired? Um, how do you get back into it after so long, you know? Uh, these are questions both for people who are professionals and not professionals. Like, how do we, how do we get the gears back turning, you know? Um, and for me, it's actually a lot of talking about it like this, like um, getting ideas from other people, um, going, oh, that looks really good. I'm going to try that now. And so that, that's been really helpful for me. Um, Schmas, you usually get really inspired and then plan for like a week before you make something big, especially in lockdown. It's like a project. Yeah. Um, but yeah, crisis destroys your inspiration. Same. Same with me. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about my sponsored content, but... Um, I don't know if you know this now, but I am a, I'm a salt, salt fluencer. <laughs> Morton Salt sent me like all their new um, products um, and I have Himalayan pink millennial salt, salt course. Um, I actually did, a, I did a recipe for them. Um, yeah, true salt bay. Gotta do the thing. Um, I did a recipe with them. I've worked with them before and they, they are actually very nice uh, and cool. Um, so I don't really feel like I'm shilling too much. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, so Mall Cat, the crock pot you used to make your hot chocolate, you got for Christmas last year. Yes, yes, you didn't know how handy it would become. It's very true. I When I was um, still commuting and going to work to an office, I really relied on my slow cooker because... Um, you know, things could cook while I was sleeping, things could cook while I was at the office. So I really um, honed a lot of my kind of long burn recipes that way. So like pulled pork and beans and chili, uh, short ribs, anything that took a long, long time, like oxtail, um, that, that's what I always use my crock pot for. Um, I, also, I also loved, using my crock pot when I was entertaining lots of people like um, I don't like sports very much but during the Super Bowl I would host the Super Nacho Bowl which is a giant vat of nacho cheese in a crock pot and then a whole like table full of toppings and that people could make whatever nachos that they wanted and I had a camera set up so you before you ate you would put your nacho plate and then I would just snap the photo from above um, and then I would make these big animations uh, of all the nachos <laughs> later on um, so I miss I miss doing that but yeah crock pots crock pots are great crock pots are great <coughs> you know uh, I would really what do I want I want waffles, hash browns. <laughs> Those are things that I want. I want crunchy things. I ate all the cookies already in the house. I ate all the chips. <laughs> I just need to make more crunchy things. Ooh, you're making baked beans and beef in it tomorrow. Great. 
What kind of beans are you going to use there? I used navy beans in mine. Shamas, I have not made liege waffles. Um, I think that batter has... Do you put sugar on the outside as you cook it? Is that right? I, I've had it before. Like, they have kind of like a candy crunch on the outside. There's a place outside of Portland, or I think it's in Eugene, Oregon, that ha that specializes in liege waffles. Oh, interesting. Uses pearl sugar inside. Yeah, I like the liege waffles. They're, they're a lot more, like, sturdy. <laughs> oh, the recipe calls for canned baked beans. Yeah, Bush's is good. Bush's has salt, uh, sugar in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Raw sugar cubes to break them a bit. Yeah, cheaper. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Gio. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, yes. I'm also glad to be back streaming. I had to go be a person under a blanket last week, so I hope we all understand that. <laughs> oh, in terms of crunchy, you're really craving chicharron right now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, chicharron. What do you like to, do you like to dip your chicharron? I like to dip it in the, the sasawan, which is the white vinegar with Thai chili and raw garlic. Um, sometimes my mom likes to dip her chicharron in um, sweet and sour chili sauce. You stress smoke meat? <laughs> what if, what if? Yeah, 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 yeah. Spice vinegar. Let's go. You're right. You're right. You're right. Same dip for lumpia. It's true. It's true. It's very true. I actually have some lumpia in the freezer. I should make some. Thanks for reminding me. I have some lumpia. Um, Justice, what, what are you going to smoke next? Or what have you smoked recently in your smoker, in your backyard? I miss smoking stuff. My grill has, um been rusted over. I have really small, like, you know, uh, just whatever ball grill I got from Target, and uh, the snow has really been unkind to it. <laughs> so I need to, I need to budget for a new smoker and a new barbecue this year. Geo is not a dipper since you feel it kind of compromises the crunchiness if it's dipped too long. You're right. Yeah, it's true. But I'm, I don't know, I just, I really like getting the raw garlic and burning the hell out of my tongue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is another thing I forgot to say. Um, this is what else I've been doing to relieve stress. I've been making memes of capybaras. <laughs> I, I think this is my, fir my, my first one that I made and my best one. <laughs> I'm just taking photos of, of capybaras <laughs> and making memes out of them. <laughs> me, I'm a capybara. My ration of hope, it's an apple. And that's 2021, giving me my tiny ration of apple. <laughs> oh yes, I've, I've tweeted these. Um, I'll send you the, the link later. <laughs> but responsibilities and me, <laughs> I'm a sleepy capybara. Was it you, Justice, that said this is my, uh, you like my fursona, my irresponsible capybara fursona? Um, me and online shopping. <laughs> Look at this capybara, it's like caught, it's like, oh no, you caught me online shopping. <laughs> I, I also love my fursona. Um... This is about the, uh, you know, the stimulus check that I have not received yet. Me, about to be pushed into more debt by the government. <laughs> and then, work. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I just love the energy about, of capybaras. They're just like, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, aren't they great? <laughs> I don't know. I think this is like an enclosed place. I think this was like a farm or like an animal shelter. I don't know. I just, I just grabbed these off of Instagram. <laughs> yeah. 
Me and my capybara memes. Very 2021. This is what I've been doing to, to relieve stress. Instead of starting full-blown projects. Because if you've been following me, <laughs> you know that when I get stressed, I start new projects. <laughs> but I just, I've just i been trying to rein it in. I've been trying to clean my house more and get rid of things and more clothes. Like I opened a Poshmark account and I've been selling my clothes. Um, <laughs> and, and kitchen gadgets on there. Um, so that's what I do when I get stressed and during national crises. Um, it was hard for me to, to cook and to eat and to be a person. I'm sure a lot of you felt the same way. Yes, yes, Twitch Bryant, that's exactly what I was inspired by. The video of the pelican trying to eat the capybara. I, I retweeted it and I was like, it's me sizing up every large format dish. Like if I were in front of a pan of um, like lumpia or noodles, I'd be like the pelican, like trying to put the whole thing in my mouth. <laughs> or if it's like a pizza, like this big, I'll be like, huh, 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 huh. <laughs> I don't know exactly where capybaras are from. I want to look. I should know this because I I tour managed a band called Capybara. Um, giant cavy rodent native to South America, largest living rodent in the world. Yay! Uh, Capybara in Brazil, Chiguini, Chiguino or Fercho in Colombia and Venezuela, Carpincho in Argentina, Paraguay and Ur Uruguay. Ronsoco in Peru. <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> okay, I quit food. This is now just a capybara stream. <laughs> oh my goodness. Amazing. Um, what else have I been doing to cope with crises? Um... I watched all of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, even though I sort of don't like Sabrina the character. Um, wow, what a what a season ending! It's kind of like when they know the showrunners know that they're they're ending a series, they like fast forward everything. That's kind of how it felt. Um, I'm also playing a lot of Hades, which is really fun, and I have to keep convincing myself not to play during the daytime because yeah. I, I get really into it. Yeah, Hades is like, whoa. Um, the Cappy Corner. <laughs> um, are they turning into the mammalian equivalent of water bears? In terms of affection, I would say yes. I, I think that we should all love capybaras more often. Um, <laughs> <coughs> okay, you have a strong memory of a web episode of Wild Thornberries where they ate capybara burgers. Excuse me? I never saw that show. I think I think it's really funny. You can tell someone's age by what shows they watched. <laughs> so I didn't watch Wild Thornberries. I was around for Red and Stimpy and <laughs> and Rugrats and Doug and Rocco's Mar Modern Life. <laughs> Wild Thornberries and SpongeBob were after my generation. <laughs> I mean, I also would not be happy if I knew I was eating capybara burgers. Oh my god! Oh, these horrible parents serving a capybara their kids saw. It's awful. Oh my goodness. Alright, so. If you are new to the stream, we have this really fun thing that we do toward the end where we pretend we're on the show Chopped. So if you've never seen that show, if you live outside of the US, um, Chopped is a show on the Food Network where four chefs enter a kitchen and they're each given a mystery basket. And so we pretend here on this stream, oh, it's chopped anniversary today, I didn't know that. <laughs> I can't afford cable, so I don't know these things. Um, wow, didn't know that. So four chefs have a mystery basket and they have to cook a meal based on the four ingredients that are inside of the basket. So um, if you're new to the stream, please name an ingredient you would like to appear in our basket. We need maybe three or four, and then together we're going to pretend that we're on Chopped, but we have all the time in the world and all the tools in the world um, to make whatever we want. 
Um, this exercise is just to inspire us and think about how far we can take ingredients. Um, and I just really like uh, stretching my brain this way. Um, it, it's really cool. Uh, so if you're in the chat, please name an ingredient. We'll take the first three or four and pretend that that's what's in our basket. Okay, green bean juice or pulp, great. Okay, soy sauce, great, thanks, small cat. Uh, one or two more and then we'll get going. And so first what I'll do is I'll talk about each of the ingredients and uh, what I know I can do with them so far. And then you can just chime in and just first thought, best thought, you know, uh, how would you mash up two of the ingredients? How would you mash up three? Or how would you mash up all four there's no pressure whatsoever this is just a fun exercise to see like oh could you do that um like so for example um earlier when i showed off the cake that i made i was like huh i know that applesauce is a replacement for egg and cakes can i use apple discards and beet discards from a juicer to make a cake um and so yeah okay so we've got so far green bean juice or pulp so basically it's just uh, disintegrated green beans, the juice and the pulp, just separated. Um, we've got soy sauce, we've got coffee beans, and maybe a protein, if anyone has an idea of a protein. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is great. Okay, let's talk about some of these ingredients. I think we need one protein if somebody has an idea for protein. Tofu, thank you Twitch Bryant, and welcome. Um, okay, so we've got four ingredients, green bean, green bean juice or pulp, so it's like a, its own thing here, soy sauce, coffee beans, and tofu. This is fascinating. <clears throat> Ooh, I didn't know. I didn't know you could, I don't know Nagari flakes. I don't know that. Oh, okay, so, 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 green bean juice and or pulp. We don't have the green bean itself. We've had the broken parts. So the green bean juice is bright green, um, but will turn brown if left at room temperature for like, 30 minutes so if you want to keep it green we gotta like work with it quickly or add an acid like lemon or lime um, the pulp as I discussed earlier can be a fortifier in baking it can be something that uh, uh, helps a cake like become uh, more thick I'm sorry this is the hand gesture I made <laughs> um, you can use it in baking, you can use it in cooking. It can also be a dumpling filling. It can be an egg roll filling. We can stir fry it. We can pickle it. We can put it in an omelet. Omelet? I almost said amulet. You can put it in an omelet. Um, it's a filler. So, you know, you can make a frittata. We can make so many things. Anywhere that you would use chopped vegetables, we can use that green bean pulp somewhere. Um, the green bean juice we can use in sauces. We can drink as is as a cocktail. We can make a soda. Whoa, green bean soda. Uh, what else? What else? If you have ideas on how we could use those ingredients, please sound off in the chat. So moving on, coffee beans. This is really funny. I actually have very, very little experience with coffee because I don't drink it. I actually do not know the proportions of how to make a coffee. <laughs> I know that they are oil soluble, um, that when you make espresso, that it is an emulsion of milk floating in the coffee solution. I know you have to grind them, you can steep them, and they are activated by hot uh, treatment. So either steaming, roasting, um, cooking, steeping. Uh, you can flavor anything with coffee by steeping. Um, more of the flavor comes out when you grind it. Uh, yeah, I don't drink coffee. No, I don't. 
I know. Um, a lot of people are surprised. <laughs> How do I have this much energy? I don't know. I think it's anxiety. <laughs> uh, all right. If you have any other cooking advice about coffee, please let us know in the chat. Um, with tofu, tofu is like a marvel. It is, uh, it has so many different versions. It has soft, it has firm, it has extra firm textures. It can be sold in fried sheets. It can be sold in strings or noodles. It can be sold in rolls. Like if you've ever been to a hot pot restaurant, you can get them in like these flouncy uh, rolled up versions. Um, but yeah, tofu is very versatile. It can fry. It can bake, it can soak, you can whip it. If you use the extra silky version, you can whip it, it becomes sauce-like. Um, there's, there's lots of things, but you just have to play with the amount of moisture in the tofu. So depending on how you are, what you're trying to make in the final dish, the tofu, you know, you'd have to treat it differently. So stir frying tofu, for example, if we had um, a firm block of tofu, we would need to drain the water out and press it between some kitchen towels to get a lot of that moisture out um, so that we can get some crisp edges on that stir fry tofu. So if we were working with firm and not extra firm, because the extra firm, it, you won't worry about crumbling when you stir fry it. But firm tofu, um, we would want to put like some cornstarch or potato starch on the outside of it to get a crisp outside. Uh, we can also marinate tofu. We can treat it like meat. Um, uh, it would still need some time because it has so much liquid on the inside of it. We need to salt it enough so that we can draw out that moisture and then put flavor in. Um, I'm just a huge fan of um, soft steamed tofu, if you've ever had that. Um, with like fish egg on top and scallion and soy sauce. It's so simple and so good. Um, and there's also a Filipino dish called tao, which is uh, tofu that has been steamed in soy milk. So it's kind of like byproducts of each other being cooked together. And then it's topped with molasses and tapioca and fruit. Yeah, tao is so good. Uh, there's a recipe coming out. Um, next year in a book that I that I worked on for Tao. Yeah, we did a strawberry, a molasses, and tapioca Tao. Very, very good. So, it, so tofu can go sweet and savory. So think about that. Um, okay, so what were our ingredients again? Uh, okay, you said coffee beans, tofu, soy sauce. I'm sorry, I forgot soy sauce. Um, there are so many kinds of soy sauce. So not just like the American, you know, Americanized, like whatever. Uh, we also have uh, different ages of soy sauce. So soy sauce can be aged like wine. Yeah, it can be aged like wine and it can be thicker in viscosity. Yeah, the deep sauce. Yeah, it can be reduced. Kind of like how you would reduce balsamic vinegar, how it gets really syrupy. Yeah, yeah, soy sauce has different ages and different... Um, flavor profiles, depending on how they aged it and where they aged it. Just like wine, you can age soy sauce in barrels and whatever kind of barrel you're using will impart the flavor of, of uh, the wood, you know, into the soy sauce. So um, don't just think that you're using soy sauce from a packet. Um, there are all kinds of soy sauce that you can use um, to fit the different needs. So if you're gonna be reducing the soy sauce, we would wanna drizzle that. It's not something that you're going to be cooking for a long time because it's already reduced a lot um, and it would just get bitter, you know, if you, and just really salty. Um, but I love that we're using tofu and soy sauce because they're pretty much part of the same process. <laughs> um, but soy sauce is a great marinade. It's a great, it's a great additive to instead of salt. Like if you were replacing salt in a dish, you could use soy sauce. Um, what else about soy sauce? You can marinate eggs in it. Uh, what are the things? You can mix it with vinegar to make a gastrique. That's kind of what I do. Ooh, Indonesian sweet soy sauce is so good. Okay, I haven't tried that. That sounds amazing. Wow, that sounds great. 
Okay, friends. Okay, so how would we combine a few of those ingredients or all four? Remember, they are broken down green beans, so the juice and the pulp of a green bean, soy sauce, tofu, and coffee. So don't feel pressured to do all four. Like, try just two at first. Like, how would you combine the coffee and the, and the soy sauce? How would you combine the tofu and the green bean? And then, you know, you can keep adding elements if you want to. But this is just a fun exercise. Don't feel any pressure. Um, it's okay if you don't have any ideas right now. Maybe you'll have another idea over the week. It's bothering you and you're like, Jen, <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> okay, Justice says, coffee sweetened with green bean juice. Reduced soy sauce drizzle on the whipped tofu on top. Oh, you went for a drink. Oh my goodness. That's interesting. I mean, I don't, I don't really drink coffee, so I can see that the bitter note of the co roasty bitter note of the coffee, going with the sweetness of a green bean, uh, and whipped tofu on top. That sounds like a like a dessert. <laughs> and yes, small cat, you can stir fry tofu. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, green coffee is a light, juicy berry. I mean. On Iron Chef, when they have like the featured ingredient, they have like all versions of that ingredient. So I would say, yeah, sure, there's the green ver the green bean version also. Okay, stir fry the tofu and the green bean. Mix the juice in, soy sauce, and crushed coffee beans and mix it into the tofu. Yeah, stir fry. Mmm, 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 mmm. I don't know what Golden Mountain sauce is. Oh, thicker and sweeter used for migoreng, fried noodles, kind of like pancit canton. Interesting. Yeah, that drink does sound like a prank for someone expecting a mocha. <laughs> All right, friends. How would you mash up the green bean stuff with tofu, coffee, and soy sauce? So I would probably try to make a coffee taho or like a mocha taho here. So I would uh, steep soy milk in coffee and then steam a block of soft tofu in that coffee. Whoa. And then maybe do like a simple syrup with the green bean juice. So if you remember, simple syrup is a one-to-one -one ratio of water to sugar. So I would do one cup of water, one cup of sugar, uh, bring it to a simmer, turn it off, and then mix in the green bean juice. So I'd have green bean simple syrup. And so I'd have like a, like a dessert soft tofu situation. I'm thinking... I'm thinking dessert. Like, how can I make a cheesecake by whipping the tofu? Like, if I whip the tofu with the green bean juice, um, and maybe add some cream cheese and do, like, a, a coffee graham cracker crust. That's like a cheesecake, like a green cheesecake. The soy, though, I'm having trouble putting in there. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Does anyone else have any ideas? How would you mash up green bean pulp and or juice, tofu, soy sauce, and coffee? How can I make a barbecue dish? Like barbecue tofu. Oh, okay. There's a place here in, in Brooklyn that puts coffee in their barbecue sauce. So we could do a coffee barbecue sauce on some smoked tofu with the with the soy sauce also whipped tofu mousse with green bean and some matcha for a vegetal base oh yeah and then candy the coffee beans with sugar and soy sauce for like a sweet salty vibe cool that sounds great we could do like a coffee adobo tofu like vinegar soy sauce gastrique but instead of so much garlic we do coffee and then braise some some tofu in it. Serve that over rice. We just need some fat in there, like butter. Could you mash the tofu and pulp together into a patty and fry like a burger? Yes, you could. We'd probably need to add some breadcrumb 
to hold it together or some egg. But yes, burger, tofu, totally. What would happen if you soaked tofu in coffee? It, it would be like um, that dish I was mentioning earlier, taho. If you were to steam it in the, in the coffee. Yeah, you would have coffee flavored tofu. I would just put fruit on top of that. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> breakfast tofu. That's what Taho is, breakfast tofu. Um, but burger is a great um, direction here. So when you walk into mental exercises like this, it's always fun to think of, okay, how can I make this into a sandwich? How can I make this into a soup? How can I make this into something that I already know how to make? <laughs> so that you can like parse through it easier, you know? So how can I make this into a taco? <laughs> how can I make this into a dumpling? I mean, easily we could do soy sauce, the green bean discards with the tofu in a dumpling for sure. Mmm. How can I make a sandwich? You could do a coffee smoked tofu sandwich with a green bean pickle. You could probably fortify the bread with tofu. It just has a lot of moisture. You would probably not add as much of the dairy in there or egg. It's just really heavy, I think. You wouldn't you wouldn't really get much lift in there, I don't I don't think. But I don't know. I'm really I'm really new to this whole substitute substitution in, in baking. <laughs> I mean, okay, let's start with this. Like what other tofu dishes do we know that we can incorporate the other ingredients into? So for example, agadashi tofu, like Japanese tofu, that's tofu that is tossed in cornstarch fried and then you have like a dashi um, sort of ponzu sauce so instead of that why don't we make like a soy green bean dip oh haka stuffed tofu yeah there you go green bean discards as a steaming vessel like banana leaf absolutely totally like a little nest a little green nest and it would impart the flavor of the green bean but not necessarily be in the dish Mystery bean. <laughs> Myst mysterious green bean wafting smell. That's really cool. I like that. That's a great idea. <gasps> what if you could steam eggs like that? Like in the little green nest? Oh, that looks... That's some... That's some like 11 Madison Park Alinea level. <laughs> that's funny. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, you could do um, tofu pocket like a Japanese tofu pocket with the green bean on the inside. Soybean, green bean, and coffee bean, the discourse is still alive. It's all bean dead all the way down. It's beans all the way down. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Well, that's great. These are all great, great ideas. And I'm glad that, um, you know, some of these concepts are blowing your mind. That's kind of the purpose of the exercise is to like play in our mind the kitchen mind kitchen that's actually the name of a radio show my friend matt used to have he would do sort of like this he called it mind kitchen um but yes last call in the chat for ideas how would you mash up green bean pulp and juice with soy sauce tofu or coffee yeah and this has all been really fun. Thank you all for participating. It makes my day. It really makes my day. Yeah, dark bean arcanas. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, friends. Well, thank you for participating. I'll be back next Wednesday at 5 p.m. at Eastern with my first ever guest. Do you wanna, do you have any guesses about who my first guest is? Cause I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm really, really, really excited that I, I have two guests line up for the for the next couple weeks. Um, my first guest is going to be 
Aaron Katano Saez from All My Fantasy Children. He also happens to have worked in the New York food industry for a while. Um, we are going to be talking about outdoor cooking, so please bring your questions about that next week. Um, we met on Twitter um, through Critical Bits um, because we both were on different weeks guests of their um, stream on Fridays, which where we play um, Brandon Leon Gambetta's game, Pasión de las Pasiones, <laughs> uh, which was really fun. Um, but we've become friends since then and give him a follow. Uh, I'll put his link in the chat here. Um, he'll be joining me next week over Zoom. And here's his podcast on the One Shot Network here um and yeah i'll be back next wednesday with aaron and i am so so excited but get ready for some technical difficulties because you know when you add any complexity to anything on twitch everything goes wrong <sighs> oh my goodness um, so I will be on Twitter and Instagram to help you answer any of your cooking questions all week long. Um, please let me know, um, if you have any cooking questions until next time. Uh, we have a new episode of, um, Float City coming out on Friday, so hope you can listen to it then. And my friends, it's been really, really fun to see you again, and I hope to see you again next week. Uh, please come back and uh, hang out with me and Aaron next week, okay? Bye, everybody! Ha <laughs> ha